So you got to be willing to fail. That is one of the things that Steve Jobs said. And one of the pieces of this book that I actually really love, and I think it's going to be one of the things that help you move past some of the fear and overthinking that it takes to start a business in a weekend. So yes, this book does what it claims as far as starting a book in a weekend, and it calls it a million dollar weekend. And it really does help you, um, your business to, you know, be a million dollar business. Now, obviously there are no overnight successes. So we are not going to say that you are going to start making a million dollars in a weekend, but I love the title. Um, I think it's catchy. I think it's a great marketing tool. And he really gives you some good advice. And he's, you know, Noah Kagan is the author of this book. And he really does set you up to start building the business that you want that could potentially make a million dollars. And really all it is, is doing some research beforehand. And he breaks it down into three parts. So I want to go through those three parts with you guys and try not to make this video too long. So let's jump in. Welcome to the Practice Your Perfect podcast. My name is Ashley Tate. And if you're new here, I am a nonprofit founder and business consultant that does this podcast. And I really want to help people learn how to lead better so that they can impact the world positively. One of the things that I think is most important when you are starting a business, no matter what business you're starting, whether it's nonprofit, for profit, online, a brick and mortar, whatever it is, is to really validate those business ideas and to just get started. And that's what this book is really all about. Now in his book, he doesn't have much fluff, which I love. And I think if you follow most of what he talks about in this book, you will come out at the end with a business, a minimum viable business, at least you will have gone through the major pieces of a business plan and really kind of thinking through those things, but it is very accelerated, hence the name Million Dollar Weekend. And that's a great thing because it doesn't give you enough time to overthink. It doesn't give you enough time to be stuck in fear, which is a lot of times what I see with um, clients that I work with or people who want to start things, but they're just thinking too much about what could happen, right? And what you have to understand is that entrepreneurship is really just one big experiment. People experiment, experiment, they evolve, they pivot. And you guys have heard me talk about this. If you've been on my channel at all for any length of time, you know that I talk a lot about it takes practice to be an entrepreneur. It takes experimentation. It takes moving past fear. It takes a lot of things to just kind of put yourself out there and decide that you're going to start this business and you don't know where it's going to go. So he puts some of the guardrails on for you and just makes it easy enough for you to just take an idea and, and just start moving forward. All right. So the first thing is you want to find a problem that people that you can solve for people, like what is an issue that's out there that people want solved that maybe they haven't thought about yet. Now, Noah uses something simple, something as simple as dog walking. And I think it's a great example because it's something that you can easily do on your own. It only depends on you. You don't need a lot of infrastructure. And he shows you how to set that up. He also has another example of selling something online whatever that might be. A lot of us in the marketing space would call that a widget. And so whatever that product widget is, you can sell that online. He shows you how to set that up as well. But what it comes down to in the, in the end of all of the reading is that you just have to take a chance on yourself. And whether it's a widget or it's you using your own services or a product, you have to actually market it and you actually have to do something with that. And you have to take a you have to take a little bit of a leap of faith. So he talks a lot about fear in the first part of the book. And then he moves into some very practical information about crafting an irresistible offer and, you know, creating a solution that makes money based on some very simple research. And I want to just read you a couple of the things that he says that we're going to talk about. It says, find a problem people are having that you can solve. That's number one. Number two, craft an irresistible solution that also makes money based on simple research and quickly validate without spending money by pre-selling before you build it. Now, these are in general, very common marketing um, strategies that if you were to hire a business consultant or you had someone that works with you on digital marketing, this is what they're going to tell you as well. But I think people think that when we say these things to just go ahead and start before you even have it built, I think it sounds a little too counterintuitive. So people don't necessarily want to do that. So 
let's start on part one. It's all about starting. And I love his intro because his first page for that chapter is just effing start. And that's really what it comes down to. Starting and testing is all entrepreneur entrepreneurship is. Like if you're an entrepreneur, you are used to starting and testing. Sometimes you fail, sometimes you win. And that's just the name of the game. That's how it goes. But you have to be able to start it to see if it's going to work or not, right? So the next piece of that is to um, ask for your first $1 to make it real. Um, and then he goes into the now, not, not how habit to cultivate. This is one of the things that I did with my nonprofit that does make a profit, by the way. Um, and also something that I did with my online courses that still sell to this day. Sorry, you guys might be able to tell I'm having some allergies right now, but we're going to push through this video. So the idea that you can start selling something without it being made is so true and it works. You wouldn't even realize how well it works. Now, a lot of times with nonprofits, I will tell people to go ahead and start a project and test it out and see if it works, if it resonates with people with the idea, walk through the project to see if there are going to be any kinks. And even when you start your nonprofit, it really still is a business at the end of the day. So you have to see if people are willing to donate to your business to make the impact that you want to make. Like, is that issue that you are focused on serious enough that other people care about it and that they also want to see it mitigated, right? And the difference with a nonprofit is that you put yourself out of business. That's how you know that you've your social purpose or you've you've, you know, reached the pinnacle of whatever your nonprofit's going to be because they no longer need it because now the issue has been helped, right? So if you want to get all the dogs in the neighborhood, you know, a home that don't have one, and then that happens, then you can close your nonprofit and you know you've done your job. Now, the opposite is true when you start a digital business or a small business, or you just start a business that's making money, making money the ultimate goal. And having your product in people's hands and people using the product is the impact that you're making. So it doesn't really matter which type of thing you're creating. The most important thing is that can you sell that without it being built yet? And that's important because people are giving you feedback. And if you can do that and they will pay you beforehand, for instance, like I said, with my course, I was creating videos and I just told people like, hey, I'm going to create this course. If you want to be a part of it, I'll give you this discount. People signed up and that was my test. I just, I just did the course every day with the people that purchase. And that was the creation of the course. Ultimately, like the, the overall arching course. And sometimes you don't make anything um, and you build it as you go so that you can see where the kinks are and you can see what makes it better, what people actually needed as opposed to what you thought they needed, feedback, and you're able to switch around things and pivot as quickly as necessary. And that's pretty much what he's talking about in this book is you want to be able to make things that you know people want. And he says that most people overthink first and then they act later. Later, And successful entrepreneurs, they act first and then they figure it out later. And I want to add to that, that they do it with fear right by their side and they don't expect to be an overnight success. So this is a really important piece of becoming an entrepreneur and realizing that you want to start a business. You have to understand that no one's ever done what you're doing before. No matter if there are hundreds of thousands of businesses that are just like yours in the same genre as yours or the same niche, no one can do it like you. So you're creating something from scratch that's never been done before. And that's why you have to just act and then you figure it out as you go or you figure it out later. And that's really what entrepreneurship is all about and why we say you have to do it with fear and you can't overthink it. You just have to start. Okay, so he recommends something called a freedom number. Now, a lot of us in marketing will just consider this like, what is your number that you can live off of? And that's essentially what he's saying is, What's the number that's going to pay your bills, allow you to have some freedom, allow you to live the life that you imagined when you were starting on this entrepreneurial journey? Once you figure out that number, you just work backwards. And it sounds simple, and I'm going to go into it later because he gets into it a little bit later as we talk about building and growing your business. But these are just one of the first tips that he gives as the start of the book to kind of frame your mindset about getting started. 
One of the last things that he talks about is getting used to rejections and asking anyway. Now, all of that is included in that part one of just starting. He's going to have you ask people you know, what their ideas are on your idea. And some people are going to reject that idea. And you have to understand that not everybody understands how entrepreneurship works. So get used to rejection and keep asking anyway. Don't ever stop asking. That's something that people have a real, it's a real hurdle for a lot of people to ask for, to ask if they will try the business, to ask if they'll try the service, to ask if they'll buy the product. And that really is the key in selling your business and really getting it off the ground. So you only have three days. According to this book, you only have three days. Okay. And I love that about it because it's all action oriented. There is no time to stop and think about it and mull over it and all these things. So that's one of the things that makes this book so amazing is that it makes people move if you're willing to follow the advice. Okay. So let's go into part two. Part two is all about building. So now we know that we have to start with fear. We have to start when we're afraid. We get all of that. Now let's go into building. So this is where he explains the zero to one dollar. And essentially, if you can make one dollar, then you can make 10. And if you can make 10, you can make 100. And if you can make 100, 1,000 and so on and so forth. And that's kind of his focus is finding a profitable business idea and then finding solutions, not just ideas. So a lot of times we'll come up with an idea like, oh my God, we should make t-shirts. Okay, great. But do people really need a t-shirt? And if they do, what type of t-shirt do they actually need? What are they looking for in a t-shirt? Do they want something that represents them? Do they want something that feels really comfortable? Do they want something that fits better? Like what are some of the issues with some of the t-shirts that they currently have? And that's your job. Your job is to go out and define the solution that they need to, so that you can go back and make your product exactly what it is that they need. And I love that he talks about experimentation because as you know, the Practice Your Perfect podcast is all about practice and experimenting and testing and really understanding what people want, what you want, how you want to live, how you want your business to grow, all of the things, what works, what doesn't work, and not being afraid of, of essentially failing or not knowing all of the answers at the start. So he always starts with, have you asked your customer what they think? And he calls this the customer first approach, whereas a lot of people do a founder first approach. And if you've been in any of my videos about starting a nonprofit, I do talk about you cannot come from the founder's mindset. You have to come from what your customers want and what your donors want, what they're looking for and what they want to support. And it very much is the same with business. So practice experimenting and know these three questions, the answers to these three questions. And this will help you figure out exactly what people actually want. These are the questions you might want to ask yourself. Who is your audience and where are they? So one of the examples he had was talking about finding customers, I think for, I want to say it was for dog walking. I don't even know what it was for, but it doesn't matter. Whatever it was for, he, his customers were on Reddit. So it's important to know what customers you're looking for and then also where you can find them. And a lot of times people don't know where they can find those people. So there are lots of forums out there. There are Facebook groups, there are Instagram groups, there are Twitter spaces. There are lots of places where people are ripe with your customers. And it actually says that they're your customers because it's usually in the title of one of these groups. So you can go in there and you can ask questions to see what do you need? What are you missing? How can I help you? Now, once you find that problem that they have, you can find a problem that, that they want to solve, and then you work backwards to engineer your product for that specifically. So let's say that a lot of my clients have a problem with um, going through the process of starting a nonprofit, which is a, a true example. They were going through the process of starting a nonprofit, but it was, you know, they didn't want to mess up. They didn't want to miss a step. They wanted to make sure that they were doing everything correctly. So all I did was I put all of the steps that I knew that I did, I put them into a course and recorded it and sold it. And so you can do the same thing. There's something that you know that a lot of people may have been asking you about or that people don't know how to do that you do know how to do. And you can just put that into a packaged product. It can be a worksheet, a checklist. It could be a lot of different things, a product. And then you're solving the problem that you already know your customers want. So that's 
really where the core of this book focuses on is finding the problem that people want solved because then the selling becomes easy. You already know that people want this product. Okay. Now the next thing is to develop an MVP. And I've talked about this before. I actually love this book, uh, The Lean Startup, and it talks all about the MVP. It's called Your Minimum Viable Product. It is not a business plan. You don't necessarily need a business plan, but you do need a minimum viable product so that people can see what you're trying to sell, you know what you're trying to sell, and you have something to work with and then shift and pivot and test and all of the things you can do with this minimum viable product. So remember that whatever you start can always be shifted. It can always be changed. Uh, it can always be improved. And that's why it's so powerful to just start because once you have something to work off of, then you can build off of that and you can shape and shift and move it and fix it and all of the things. You can make more iterations of it. And most people who have an online business and sell online courses do this. And you can also just start it. And if people love it and it's working, then keep just keep using that. And that's what I've done with my online course too. I've, I've not re-recorded because the information is always still the same. You can update information if things have changed. There's lots of things that you can do, but you don't need to make it perfect. People just want the information. So one thing that I love that he says is that you're not selling. You're just trying to have a conversation with your customer. And it's the best way to put something um, when you're talking about trying to promote your product or sell your product to someone when you're just starting out, because you're trying to find out what your customer needs. And you're trying to see if you're essentially like interviewing your customer like they would in be interviewing you, except you're kind of cold calling and asking them some questions and they're going to give you honest answers. And that's what you want. You want it to be a conversation. So in his one minute business model, he explains that you're not trying to go out to create demand for something that seems exciting. It's to go out and find some existing demand and satisfy it. So he gives you two questions to ask. One, he says, ask if the market that you're looking at is dying, flat, or growing. And where you want to be is in the flat or growing phase. And the reason for that is so that you can actually kind of jump on that, what he calls is a wave, right? So you want to jump on that wave. Now, he recommends using a tool like Google Trends to actually find something like this. He kept everything very simple. You don't have to spend any money. You don't have to make a website. You don't need any of that stuff. Then the second, the second question that he has you ask is, is this a million dollar opportunity? And the way that you know that is to work backwards from the number of potential customers and the price of your product. Now, the way that he, uh, he advocates for people to find their actual amount of customers is you can use Facebook ads. You can look like you're getting ready to start an ad and then you just go on and you look for the population of people that are looking for that specific thing. Now, this is not going to be perfect, but it's pretty dang close and it's quick and it's something that most of us all have access to to create an ad on Facebook. So I'm going to add this setup in the description and it's basically just a quick little setup that he comes up with to give you a quick rundown for how to set all of this up. So he starts with Google Trends. He wants it flat with some growth, size of the market, 2,500,000. And then the cost of the product is $50. And the total value is 125 million. All right, so is it a million dollar idea? Yes. So he asked those five questions and I'll put those in the description box for you um, so that you can see. And what that does is it breaks down your one minute business model into target profit, 1 million. Profits per unit sold, right? That's your revenue minus the cost to make the, prop, to make the product. And that gives you your net. That then tells you your profit, right? And your profit, if you want your profit to be 1 million and you're selling them at 1250 per unit, that means that you'll need a total sales of 80,000. So you may not sell 80,000 this weekend, but you know that to get to 80, if you can sell 80,000, then you can make a million dollars. And so then you have a $1 million idea. Now I do like this because he's not telling you that you're going to make this in a weekend. He's not telling you how, how long it's going to take you to make that. Cause that really comes down to how quickly you can grow your business, how much you're going to spend on, you know, marketing and advertising and all of the efforts that you're going to push on for a strategy. 
But I do love that he can show you and help you set up how easy it is to just see, is this even work? Is it even worth my time? Is it something that could actually work? Now, the next thing is the 48 hour challenge that he gives you because now it's time to validate your idea. So he asks you to find three customers in 48 hours. This could be a family member. It could be a friend. It could be a, an associate. It, it doesn't matter. He wants you to have instant verification of your product idea. So one of the examples that he uses and I love is, like I said earlier, the dog walking. So say you come to someone, you're like, hey, I'm starting this dog walking business. I, I would love to come over and walk your dog for $25. You might, might actually get, I don't need a dog walker, thanks. But they might say, but I do need someone to be here and house sit when I leave for vacation. And then you can say, okay, great. I will book that for you when's your next vacation. They pay some sort of a fee to hold that spot and they now have a dog sitter. So maybe instead of what you thought you might be doing dog walking, maybe now you're actually doing dog sitting and your customer told you exactly what they wanted. And that's really the point of this book is he really talks mostly about being a customer first entrepreneur. And when you can be a customer first entrepreneur, then you can pre-sell things and it's validated because people already know what they're getting. They know what they've just asked for. And you've said, you know what, I'll do it for you. But let's just say you're not there yet. Here are a few questions that he does ask to help you explore that validation conversation. So the first one is what's the most frustrating part about what's currently happening? So that's number one. So when you ask people, you can say, what's the most frustrating part about, for me, it was like starting a nonprofit. Okay. If it were the steps and I could see that in a customer, or I noticed that with multiple customers, which is what happened, then I know that this is what my customer really needs. And that's what I need to go create. So then your next question would be, well, how would having um, a set of steps or a course, a 30-day course that will walk you through every single step, how would that make your life better? It'd make it better because I could I could like, you know, just start my nonprofit and move on to the actual part of growing the business, right? So it got, it got rid of some friction for them and helps them create better traction. Okay, well, what's the third part? How much do you think X should cost? So you can ask them when you actually have them in the course. Now, what I did with my nonprofit course was I started the first one for $10 and it was because it was like, I'm going to do this next week. Started it for $10 people joined and then I sold it after I talked to them like how much is this worth like what how much did that help you and then also keeping in mind that these are nonprofit founders um, a lot of these people have just good hearts and they just want to get their stuff out there so then the final price ended up at $50 and so you can set the price or you can have them set the price but that will tell you wherever you set the price it will tell you how many units you need to sell in order to make a million dollar idea, you'll know if you've set the price correctly when you can multiply the amount of people from the Facebook ads by the price that you plan to sell it to see if you can make more than a million dollars. And that's what he's trying to show you that this doesn't have to be difficult. You don't have to make this incredibly long business plan. I even have a video about a one page business plan. Like I've never believed in having this long drawn out process to start. You just start, you just do and you start building. And that's where entrepreneurship comes in. So the next piece of this is, would this option work or would you prefer this? So basically you're giving them a couple of options. I think one of the options he used in the book was talking about walking your dog or setting up a time to house sit. And so it really allows people to decide what they need and you're giving them something at probably a lower price than it would be for something else, but you're also validating your idea. So it's a win-win situation. Now, it will tell you which option you need to focus on if you have a lot more excitement about one or the other. And once you're in the middle of this, he really recommends asking people to pay immediately. So the key here is rejection is good. And I've always felt that way. I think rejection is a positive thing. It helps you understand where people are coming from, where the message went wrong or why they don't want your product or what you need to change, how to pivot all the things. It tells you everything you need to know when you get rejected. So welcome rejection and then ask people why not? Because remember, it's a conversation. You want to understand why someone wouldn't purchase this option and what they would be looking for or who would like something like that, which is a referral, by the way. 
Um, and then my favorite one that he has you ask is he follows up with, what would make this a no-brainer for you? And followed up with, would, what would you pay for that? So all of that is part of the conversation. The ask, the options, the rejection, all of that is part of that conversation, helping you further refine any sort of business planning that you want to do and how you're going to reach your following customers. Okay, so we move into part three. Part three is all about grow it. And growth is like, I love this part. Now, growth generally has to do with your systems and processes. Um, and that's what kind of gets you to that million dollar level. And we just talked about systems and processes. And actually, I'm going into a full series of that coming up in the next few weeks. But systems and processes are something that will allow your business to really grow and grow at scale, where you can start to see where there's kinks. Now that you know you have your customer, you've moved past the fear, you've started the business, you know what you have to do. People really are forgiving as far as like, they don't really care if you have a website. They don't care if it looks perfect. They really just want the solution that you have. And if the solution works, it's like wildfire that it starts to spread. Now he says the best thing ever, because if you guys know anything about some of the teachings that I do, you know, the, the social course that I have, it's all about understanding where social media fits into your strategy. And so what he says here is just perfect and succinct. Social media is for growth and email is for profit. And there are no truer words than that. And Noah Kagan really understands the key in finding out, you know, who your customers might be, even potential customers that may not be ready to buy, but to get them onto your email list, because then you're allowed to talk to them forever, right? We're not just focused on getting the sell. You're focused on being able to work with that customer forever and talk to them always. So it's always best to get people on your email. And if you are not on my email currently, I will leave the link down below and I would love to have you guys join. I send out actionable tips every week and it's something that I really enjoy writing for you guys. And it's called the weekly win. So sign up for that. It'd be awesome. All right. So the first thing he talks about here is to, when you're thinking about growing it, is to understand what your unique angle is. Can you answer the questions, who you are, why people should listen to you, what you're passionate about and how you can help people, like what you will actually do for them. So these don't have to be anything groundbreaking. It could just be, you know, I'm a, I'm a nonprofit founder and business consultant. Why should people listen? Because I've created online courses. I've created a successful nonprofit. I've done a lot of these things and I do it all with fear and I do it quickly. I do it messy. I'm all about those things, right? And I want to teach people how to do it messy and how to just start. I want to teach them how to, you know, lead their life on their own terms and, and build whatever business they have, how to get out there and unleash or something amazing. So that's what I will do for people. What will you do for people? The, this doesn't have to be something difficult. And the next thing he talks about, which is another great paganism is what I'm going to call him, is document what you do, not what everyone should do. And I think a lot of us get stuck in that trap where we feel like, oh, no, we have to be the expert. We're supposed to be telling people what to do. But really, people just want to see what you're doing so that they can see if it aligns or fits with what they need to do or want to do or want to become. So just share. Share what you're doing. Document it. And it makes, you know, it, it makes making content a lot easier. And that's why I wanted to even share this book with you guys, because I feel like it's a great book. Like, I know a lot of my customers could really benefit from reading this book, not just hearing it from me by hearing it from someone who's built million dollar companies over and over and over again and how not difficult it doesn't have to be. And that was a double negative. I'm sorry, guys. Now, the next thing he's going to talk to you about in this book or that you're going to go over is that this lead page is attached to an email list and that delivers your lead magnet. So again, I just feel like the book is like the mother listening to someone else tell their children something. I keep saying, I know I've said this many times before, but this is the deal. Like this book really does simplify everything that you might learn from a marketer, right? We tell you to create a lead page, attach it to an email list so you can grab someone's email and then you give them something of value, which is that lead magnet. Now that lead magnet is something that doesn't have to be difficult. It could be anything. It could be a checklist that leads to um, your course. It could be like for, if I wanted to, I could create something for nonprofits, like I could create something for digital marketing, like how you're going to start. You could turn this into a lead pay, a lead magnet, like that leads to the lead page for something else. 
But basically what they're saying is the ultimate goal is to get someone's email. A lot of people think that the ultimate goal is to build a lot of subscribers. But one of the things he talk one of the things he talks about on there is even when you're finding your platform, and I'm the same as Noah in that I will take you know, a small amount of YouTube subscribers before I care as much about how many Instagram uh Instagram followers I have. And the reason for that is because being on YouTube is just a little bit more personal. It's a little bit more engaging and it's something that can grow over time. People can search and find your content, but on Instagram, that content's going to go away really quickly. And if you're not someone who's all into different things, you have to figure out like the right platform for you. Like if you're talking to businesses, yes, you should be on LinkedIn. If you're talking to a younger subset of people, then maybe you want to be on TikTok. Like you have to know which platform you want to be on, but also realize like the depth that you want to go into with the people who are following you or subscribing to your um, your channels. Because it is really important and it does create a different type of relationship, both for you showing up and also for the people who are. And there's also a different culture that goes along with YouTube. I mean, everybody kind of knows like, okay, if you watch somebody and you want to find out more, you know, look in the description box and you can connect with them. Like people kind of already know the culture of what what's expected on YouTube. So it really just depends on your personality and what you're looking for. The most important thing is it doesn't matter where you start or what platform you're on if you don't have these three things, right? So a lead page, an email list, and a lead magnet, something that's going to make people want to click and connect with you and give you your email. Give So once you have them on your email, one of the things that they talk about is like, what do I do? What do I do on the email? What you do on the email is I love the way he puts this too. He's just, he's just a great writer. Good job, Noah. So he talks about in your welcome email, it's like a great big bear hug. And it's true. Um, in that first email, you're just going to welcome people, like let them know a little bit more about you, something maybe a little personal about you, anything you've promised them, you're going to give them in that first email. And then the next one, you can say, hey, connect with me on social. This is what you can expect from my newsletter. This is what, you know, this is basically what I'm all about and, and what you'll be getting from me from here on out. And then the last piece is a great piece of content, something that maybe sometimes you can, you can, you know, separate if someone comes in, like for instance, if someone comes in as a nonprofit or someone comes in as a digital, um, a digital marketing business or whatever lead magnet, then you can kind of continue tailoring your emails to that until they come onto your main email list, which is what you've been sending out each week. So this is just a way to kind of get them used to hearing from you and developing that relationship over time. So. It's not going to be like you guys are fast friends, but like we're going to do, you know, a welcome. We're going to chat a little bit. You get to see a little more behind the scenes if you connect on the other social platforms. And then you're going to give them some content that maybe they've been looking for as well. So the the next thing I love is that he talks a lot about um, the law of 100 in this book. And it's something that really I, I love to talk about because I, I think when you're um, creating, you're talking about practicing, right? When you're building a business, you have to practice these different aspects of your business in order to get used to doing it, used to showing up, uh, used to failing, used to doing things differently, right? So one of the things that he talks about is the law of 100. He wants you to do 100 of whatever it is that you've committed to. And I call this to just double down on what works and keep practicing it. So as an example, let's say that you wanted to do YouTube. I would tell you to practice. I would tell you to do a hundred videos before you decide to throw in the towel. Do those hundred videos because you're going to get better as you go, as you do it. Like you're not going to start out being amazing, but as you continue, you're going to get better and better and better. And that's kind of the key. Do 100 reps is what he calls them in the book. And actually in the book, he has a place for you to mark off those hundred reps. And um, for those of you that need something like that or like it, that's what you're supposed to do. Just keep on keep on trucking. But basically, that is the whole breakdown, building a business plan, essentially, that's not really a business plan, but in a weekend, right? We want to build that business plan, get it done. So if you have something that you are planning on unleashing, I want to know exactly what it is. So in the comments, drop what you're planning to unleash, what your something amazing is. I want to know and get out there, keep practicing and stay fierce, guys. I will see you next week. Bye.